Thank you. Uh, Tariel Chamorrois, I'm uh, uh, working for the company called DB Schenker and, uh, and uh, uh, head of the quality, security and mainly environment for this company that is a, a pan-European but also worldwide uh, freight forwarder. Uh, I'm sitting in the same position here with the, with the presentation, uh, but I will uh, s start up and we will catch up with the slides later, I hope. Um, the, the, I mean, first a few ideas concerning where we stand. What is hard facts? Hard facts is that public health uh, in, in town people, or for town people, becomes inter intolerable. Uh, I mean, we have high, high peaks of pollutions. We have uh, noise disturbances that are increasingly in the cities. Uh, we have also uh, a lot of waste of time linked to uh, traffic congestion. We also have, of course, uh, CO2 emissions that are growing, and uh, transportation is the only industry that is still growing in terms of uh, CO2 emissions uh, because of uh, where we are producing, uh, uh, finally, mainly in the East, and, and keeping up the cargo coming into uh, to Europe. And all that is, going, is giving a negative trend for the life quality. Another hard fact is also the, the fact that um, uh, transportation is, is done by 50% by um, own accounts. And La Riche qui dit oui or the others are a part of that. Uh, so the mutualization that you have described here is a key essential thing in order to massify or to group the cargo in order to save cost but also save uh, uh, particles and CO2 that we are producing. Uh, we also are facing a world of, I'm just checking again if uh, it is wor working, great. <laughs> and I'm just catching up with the slides here. So here, here am I with the topic linked to uh, a fleet uh, that is old. In our cities, the average uh, time or let's say uh, uh, years of our vehicles is around 10 years. So the new vehicles are operating ma ma mainly long distance line hauls where you need a lot of, of big volumes, but everything that is operated in cities are uh, pretty old vehicles and with low class of uh, Euro class, class two, class three, when the maximum is nowadays class six. Uh, also the logistics have been put away from the cities. Uh, the major operator are 10, 15, 30 kilometers out and all that have a, an impact. Uh, what is going on here is that our customers uh, are asking most of them to uh, reduce and to have action plans. So we are forced by customers, citizens, but also legislations to move onward. Uh, and don't remem remember that uh, a company like Schenker in France is producing 8% of the CO2 than ourselves, the rest is subcontracted. So we have an enormous change of subcontracting management. 92% of our CO2 production is outsourced. We do it for our customers, but with external subcontractors. So the chain of logistics is very important to succeed. What have we done already uh, in a company like ours? Of course, we have set targets. Uh, of course, we have a, a goal to reduce CO2. And, and this is, I mean, a political target on high level. Uh, we are going for testing vehicles that are of new technology. And the most advanced is, of course, the electric trucks. Uh, we are also going for recycling the waste that we are producing, targets with up to 60 60%. Um, everything also is linked to how we teach our people. I mean, 6,000 employees only in France that we have to teach up with how to operate. And this is an enormous energy that we need to put into, uh, into the value chain in order to have the benefit out of that. Um, also, of course, also structure all that with uh, uh, certification and, and, and all that. And at the end, also engagement that we are doing uh, with different actors, uh, municipalities, etc., etc. Um, and the core topic that we are doing is uh, massification, consolidation, groupage. I mean, the idea of what we are trying to do since years nowadays is to, do, to be like a, like a bus. I mean, we operate from a depot, 
we group cargo into a truck, not in a bus, of course, and then we, we route the cargo. We do this groupage, and we can say that we are like a kind of collective transport urban bus system, but for cargo. And this is really the core idea of what we are doing into a company like ours. And I would like to share um, a work that we have done in order to say or to, to kill a little bit the idea that have been said that transport is up to 60 or 70 percent empty. Yes, of course, there is a lot of empty runs into logistic chains. You, you have a big imbalance between north and source, uh, south and north, and this is, let's say, of course, a lot of wasted energy into the, into the supply chain. But at the same time, if you go down to what we are doing in cities, uh, this is strongly uh, massified or uh, uh, condensed cargo, groupage cargo. I mean, we are able to collect cargo from one part of France, group it to different uh, locations here in Paris. I'm taking one example here in, in Stan. We are located in Stan. Another location is, is in, in Rangis. We group the cargo and we are able to do tours with our trucks uh, that are running with yeah, between 20 and 40 stops during a tour, which makes, in fact, a high concentration of drop for our truckers. So the trucks are leaving full and they are driving back full. They go for a tour and they come back full. So I think we need really in the supply chain to differentiate what is already optimized and what could be even more optimized. And here we have an example of something that is optimized and I think that the newcomers uh, are, of course, looking for this kind of solution with the optimization. Just wanted to say one thing concerning a tool that is quite interesting for the, the freight forwarders and the transport company mainly. It's uh, uh, a tool that is French that we are trying to promote on a pan-European uh, level, which is called Objective CO2 where, uh, in fact, we give some engagement in order to work on, uh, on uh, uh, the, the vehicles, uh, the consolidation tools that we have into our networks, also the fuel that is used, and, and also the education on drivers. There is a minimum requirement in France to have an education on eco-driving, but of course you can be a little bit better than that, and that will have a, a, a clear impact on, uh, on how we can save, uh, let's say, uh, CO2 and energy on our on our roads. And for us, what are the next steps? And that might be the most interesting for you here. Uh, we are moving into um, uh, 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 solutions that are taking uh, bikes and city bikes as one of the major tools in order to distribute the cities. Um, European Commission have made calculation that uh, uh, city deliveries could be made up to 50% with bikes. So we think that bikes, even for cargo that is not only parcels, but also palletized cargo, uh, could be operated by, by bikes. So at the moment we have launched six cities where we operate with bike distribution. So 5 to 10% of our volumes are already distributed. And I'm talking about pallets, huh? not only parcel, not only the delivery, huh? uh, but also really pallets up to 180 kilos that we are able to distribute by bike. And the idea is to move onward with other cities, and Paris is, of course, on the, on the map. Uh, the other major topic that we are trying to promote is, of course, new kind of vehicles. Uh, uh, gas vehicles are, of course, the ones that are uh, seen and most seen, but of course the electric will be at one stage uh, a solution that will be uh, useful and, and will be uh, into the cities. So the testing of that part is a very important thing that we are doing at this moment. So the path for us looks like that with um, uh, Working groups internally, of course, within Schenker, but also with uh, municipalities uh, and, and, and different actors, in order to have to still secure the massification of co massification, the consolidation. Sorry, massification French uh, consolidation of cargo. Uh, use other means of transport where the bike will play an important role, and of course here everything related to digitalization and where the APIs are coming into the picture. Uh, where bookings, payments, tracking, C2 records, uh, tracking the particles is the cornerstone in order to progress into that. And just to finish here, 
the team that we are working with. So um, uh, les tri porteurs de l'Ouest, which are born in Rennes, is one of uh, our partner, I would say, more than subcontractor, where we are moving with in order to, to grow into cities with deliveries uh, on bikes. Uh, this is not a pallet bike that you see here. And of course, also with everything related to uh, IT, APIs and tracking is a cornerstone for us to move. So just to, to, to end up the story, we are, of course, taking into consideration the uh, urban delivery challenges that, are that a group like us is facing. Uh, we are building up relationship with municipalities, and this is one of the cornerstones, and this is ongoing. Innovation is a, in a big network, in a big company, is probably one of the most challenging part. Uh, testing vehicles is something that is running on. Uh, a high and uh, a big energy is also giving to education. Uh, IT developments are also ongoing. Uh, one important thing is linked to real estates, and we are still like big operating, having having terminals with three, four, five, ten thousand square meters, too far away from the cities in order to operate. And uh, of course, we are. Um, uh, securing sustainable partnership with, with some actors. So with that, I would like to thank you for, for listening to me. And be this gentleman. Thank you. Uh, you said that up to 50% uh, of the load could be delivered by bikes. Okay, is it from a technical point of view, or also from an economical and cost point of view? This is a study that we have made by, with the European Union, uh, with the CLECAT, uh, and um, and uh, yes, in terms of volumes, cargo that is representing uh, volumes that are not, let's say, full trucks and or, and construction material, of course, that I put aside, but everything that is, let's say, in the, in the normal supply chain for consumers could be moved technically by bike, up to 50%. In terms of cost, we are also learning with the experience that we are doing here in the different cities that cost-wise it is also doable. Uh, it is not more costly, and of course it comes also to the question of, of the more you move, the, the, the cheapest it is, uh, and we are not still on the balance, but today the costs are pretty the same if you move in a congested city with a truck, with a low number of drops, or a bike that is moving quicker uh, and, and, and smarter. Uh, still having people that are employed as bikers, so no, no, let's say Uber or, or let's say uh, uh, technology. People are employed or, and, are, and are able to distribute and have a, a, a full-time job as a salary, and and this and economically it is working for Schenker in Nantes or in in Rennes uh, or or uh, in Lorient. And uh, now the question is the model also functioning here in Paris. That that's the challenge we are working with at the moment. Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank you.